And in my mom's defense, the man's poem is a lot shorter. There's just a sign that says, stand a little closer, you're not as big as you think. <laughs> my daughter. She got props. <laughs> Um, the first one, some of you have met my son Jeremiah. He's read here before. Some of you remember him. Um, he just turned 20 last week, so I'm feeling kind of old. And my 10-year-old comes home from school with his first poem, and this is it. After today comes tomorrow, and mess-ups go away. After the rain comes the sun, and people feel just fine. So, 10-year-old poem. Um, and for those of you that know my mother well, you don't know her as well as you think you do. She calls me in a mad mess and says, I need a poem for my poetry group. We have to write to explain what poetry is in a poem. So give me a minute. I'll get something done and I'll call you back. Poetry is a word fall, an emotion explosion, syllabalistic symmetry, anger vented, love revealed, sorrow relieved. Poetry is your soul in writing. And um, this one I wrote, and it kind of got really angry really quick, and I, I don't know why, but it's called She Climbed. Daunting peaks frozen in ice and in time, a man's world, impassable, impossible, unthinkable. She climbed. Young and impressionable, the media dictates her style. A man's world, she must be thin and beautiful. She climbed. Alone and with child, scared and unsure, a man's world, destined for welfare and poverty. She climbed. Locked doors leading from bedroom to boardroom, a man's world, rigid and professional, she climbed. Confident in herself and her sexuality, a man's world, denounced as a whore, she climbed. She climbed and she overcame, and even if she is overcome, she climbed and the mountain is hers. Yes. If we've got time for one more, this one has a little photograph with it, if y'all can see it. I'm going to let y'all take a look at it. Um, there's a I'm from Asheville, North Carolina, in case y'all were wondering what this funny accent is. There's a photographer in Asheville, his name is Tim Barnwell, and he did a photographic collection of what a lot of people call rednecks. These are real live mountain people, and this one just jumped out of the book at me. His name is Ernest Rector, and other than this picture, I have no idea about his life whatsoever. But you kind of have to look at it to just get the feel that I got when I saw this man. It's called Jesus and Johnny Cash. <laughs> I know, right? That's what I said, too. The sun has aged his skin well beyond his years. His tired eyes blaze out to the fields where his ancestors walked. He watches as what the world calls progress takes more and more of the homestead he loves. The rough-hewn boards under his feet are both familiar and comforting. He knows each creak and groan as if they come from deep inside his bones. As a boy, he played on them. As a young man, he proposed on them. As he grew older, his children learned to walk on them, and his wife rocked grandbabies on them. Now he is alone, as gray and as worn as the porch where he stands. He hears the traffic from the highway as it speeds past. Not even the old oak tree was big enough to stop the construction. When the loneliness gets to be too much and the traffic too loud, he goes inside to the two men he spends his last days with. He prays to Jesus to keep him safe while Johnny sings the blues. He remembers all that he's lost, and he's thankful for what he has left. And as the sun sets on the old porch, the three of them walk, will walk the fields once more. The old gray man, Jesus, and Johnny Cash. Thank you.